morning, everybody, and welcome back to the Anita Bass podcast. My name is Anita Bass, and this episode is proudly brought to you by none other than Awake Tours, the greatest music festival travel company in the whole entire world. Today is a complete and utter random spin-off podcast that I just woke up and felt like I needed to do. I have a schedule of podcasts already ready to go, like 10, 12 weeks in advance, and I woke up and was like, no. I need to talk about this now. <laughs> I think it's maybe because I was going through screenshots of all the EDC photos and I found from four years ago when I was in Bali, I had these screenshots of all of these like thoughts and things that came to me there and I saw them and I was like, it's still fucking relevant. So I'm going to talk about that and bypass what I was supposed to do this week. I used to go around and ask people the same sort of questions and even if it wasn't like an official vlog interview, I would like just conversate with people about the same stuff. And just ask them questions about life, what they're doing, what makes them happy. I don't even know how many countries I've been, my peoples, but I have been traveling since I left just a month after I turned 20 and I haven't lived anywhere longer than 10 months. And I've only lived in Perth two times for 10 months during those eight years. So it's been a lot of places. I don't even know. So I've met a lot of people and I've got the opportunity to ask them a lot of questions. And so by doing this, something which came about was that every single person in the whole entire world is the same, which I've always thought anyway, but people think, oh, they're from there, they're from there, they have this different and this different and I couldn't relate. But every single fucking person is the exact same. They're going through the exact same shit. They have the exact same stuff on their mind, the exact same troubles. They have the same dilemmas with their family and their friends and it's just you're all the same. And so hopefully by me going through this list, you can kind of – it can kind of take away some pain in you feeling that you're alone and you're possibly the only person going through these types of things because you're not, you're fucking not. I've been through it. Everyone listening to this podcast has, and there's like 12 million of you. So <laughs> point number one is that everyone is the same. We have the same wants and fears. So everyone wants to be loved and accepted for who they are, whether they say that or not, or if they're like, I don't need people, that is just a defense mechanism. Like I'm full introvert and I can't be around people for that often, but I'm like, I don't need people. You can't live in a world where it's just you and you alone. Like you need people to live. So even if you're like, I don't need anyone to love me, to, eh, you do, you do. Just to bounce off people. Even if you're having a shit day, go to the shop, someone gives you a smile, that changes your day. So everyone is the same. They want to be loved. They want to be accepted for who they are. They want to feel important. And they also want to do what lights them up as in a, a job. They want to fill their time with purposeful shit. But the majority of people don't actually know what lights them up. And that's okay. <laughs> and that changes. Something can make you happy now. In a couple of years, you would be like, well, that was whack, right? So... People want to feel and they want to feel this void of, oh, I want to feel a sense of importance and I want to do and I want to be around people and I want to grow in myself and I just don't want to be stuck. But a lot of people don't know what that means to them. Which leads me to another thing and that is that there is no end thing. There is just what it is and it just is, right? So... Obviously, you know the thing about destination. When I get to this goal, I'll be happy. When I get there, I'll be happy. That's fucked and that's how I've lived most of my life. So I can guarantee that by foregoing everything for a goal, once you get to that goal, you're like, true, next goal. Like it doesn't change. It's just like today, but it's tomorrow. And that goal doesn't mean shit once you get there. So there is no end thing. It's good to have goals and aspirations and be wanting to become the type of person to do the things to get to that goal and grow as a human, that is great. But there is no like one thing for most people or ever. Like what you want that one thing to be is not going to be that one thing forever. It just is. And you just do what you want to do until you don't want to do it anymore. Like that's what life is. <laughs> that's like, a, I don't know, it can be a fucking light bulb moment for people. Like I just, I just need to know that one thing that's – ah but there's nothing. That's just that one thing. And Drake posted something today, which Ernest reposted. And it's just basically saying that life is just moments and that's all it is. 
Like think about the times which made you the happiest. You were with your friends, you were laughing, you were on some drunken mission, you saw your baby niece or nephew for the first time. Like these little moments are what make up your life and these are the things that fill you up with joy and which bring you happiness and bring you your life story at the end of the day. It's not just that one thing in three years. So people want to do what lights them up, but understand that that can be a variety of lots of little things. And also it is the way that you live your life. And this isn't a part of this podcast because this would go for fucking four hours, but it's about your attitude and mentality, which I'm not going to go into, but like there can be two people living the exact same life and one fucking hates it and detests it. And one is just full and enjoy. And it's literally your mind about the situation. Even though it's a stereotype, the richest fucking person I have ever met in my whole entire existence on planet Earth in this multi-million dollar mansion, we fucking went there to do this photo shoot after I competed and he had everything, bro. I'm talking like we went there, it was just like this three-story thing. You walk in, he's got a jet ski, a boat, all the cars in his garage. You turn to the right, he's got a glass elevator from the wine cellar. There's a stuffed fucking lion. Don't know if it was real. Let's say it's not. There was a stuffed lion. You walk into the elevator, you get like taken up in this glass elevator and you're looking out into the beach while you're doing so. You go there and he's got all these like photos of him around. He used to be a professional race car driver or something and his house is just fucking Pimped out with everything, every single bottle of alcohol, all this just money shit everywhere. And straight up, he was the loneliest, saddest I've ever met in my whole entire life. And I say that with a little bit of anger because he was actually really, like, rude and gross. Um, Obviously, like, trying to talk to him and be nice to him during, like, this photo shoot thing. But he just ended up being, like, a seedy, vulgar person. And, like, we're talking and then all he could do is talk about himself and be like, I did this and got this and got this and got this and, like... It didn't mean shit. It doesn't mean shit. (laughs) You know what I mean? Like, so your life is what you make it. And for some reason we think that riches and money is the only thing. But you can have two people with the exact same life and they can have two different experiences and it's literally based on your fucking attitude and how you look at the situation. Podcast for another day. And in saying that, someone could be as rich as that dude and they could – that could just highlight who they are and they could just have the greatest life and have friends in abundance. But this person wasn't because this person just thought that everyone should love him for who he was because he had all this money, but really he was a really bad person and money doesn't mean shit. Alrighty, so people want to be important and they want to do what lights them up. They want to do what gives them joy, but that doesn't necessarily mean you have to pick a particular career or path because that thing that can bring you joy can be a daily ritual day-to-day basis thing or just hanging out with certain type of people you know um yeah so people have the same fears as well they have the fear of just not knowing that is the main thing people were just like I don't know what I want to do in my life or my family think I should do this but I don't want to like I met a girl from Israel who was just talking to me the same as my friends do in Perth and she's like I don't know I studied all this time and I got this degree and I just thought that it was everything and then the people there didn't believe in the ideals of the thing I got the degree for and I realized it was just about money and that felt wrong but I was making so much money and I just decided to quit and then I went to India because I just fucking wanted to be anywhere but home and so I went to India and everyone thinks I'm crazy and now I just have a backpack but I don't know what I want to do but I know how I want to feel and that's it but I feel the pressure from my family and I feel the pressure of needing to make money as well I was like bro everyone feels that (laughs) that is a story that is going around the world everyone does and I can obviously say that's what I felt too and what I still do feel you know People are scared of letting other people down, whether that be friends around them or family, and just know that no one really kind of cares. And if anyone cares about you that much and is so invested in you that it fucks up like their whole day that they need to ruin your life telling you why you're wrong, then they just don't have much going on for them. Or if it's like a religious thing and a family thing, then that's just something that you're going to have to decide for yourself. We grew up Catholic and to not go along with all the ideals of everything that we'd learnt forever and go against it is obviously offensive. And I have met so many people in very, very, very strict religious families to the point where they have gone ahead with relationships and their family has literally been like, we never want to see you again. But that person has had to make that decision and be like, look, I'm not going to be happy if I keep living this lie. So everyone has that same fear. 
It is not just you. Number two is that the general consensus is that everyone is a good person. I try to tell people this so much. You can imagine my mum, bless her little soul, but grow up in Portugal, come over here, look after six kids, didn't go to school, they're living off the land. Like for me to just be like, I'm going into the world where all they do is watch a current affair on the news and it's just gore and death and that. Bro, she hates it. <laughs> she just doesn't understand it. She's like, oh my goodness, be careful, please. Like they just don't. And I try to tell her and everyone that the world is a good place. The majority of the people you meet are good. I have never had anything stolen for me or like, from me or being put at knife or gunpoint or anything like this. I leave my stuff out in hostels. As a general thing, everyone in the world is good. You need to understand. No one wakes up and it's just, I'm going to be shit today. And everyone is just doing what you're doing on your side of the world, but in their side of the world. There's people in Italy who you could get along with if you understand Italian, or there's people in the UK which you can pick up a conversation today and you will just understand you're the exact same person living the exact same life, but they're just in another country. So general consensus, most of the humans in the world are good people and the world is actually a very safe place. Like Anita, how can you just get on a train and go here, here, here? I don't know, because if I get lost, I'll just ask someone, hey, where do I go to get here? Oh, I'll go here, okay. Like people want to help. Think about if somebody came up to you. I know some of Winperth, where I'm from, sometimes it's a little more sheltered because people have their clicks. But if someone came up to you and was generally like, I'm not from here, I'm fucked, can you please look up your phone and tell me how to get there? You'd be like, of course. You wouldn't just get out a knife and stab them, which a current affair would have you think the fucking world is just a stabbed city of just death and gore and shit people. It's not. The world is a good place. Next point. Community and togetherness. Everyone wants a community and everyone wants to feel as a part of something, even if you are an introvert and you can't be around people that often. That's why there's community groups, people like belonging to something, even if it's football, you love belonging to the football group, or if it's a religion, you resonate with that religion, or if it's a spiritual group, you do that, or if it's a travel group, you do that. Like people want and need, it is actually a human need, to be part of a community and to feel like they are together with people and there's people who have their backs. If there was something to drastically go wrong, there is always someone who you can ask for help. It's very comforting. People need community and to be together at some point in their life. Next step is people are inclined to depression, which is another podcast on its own, but people are. Yeah, you need to understand that your body, your human's job is to keep you alive. It doesn't give a fuck if you're happy and you're smiling while you do that. So when you wake up, you then have to have the responsibility of getting out of this depressive state or at least putting yourself into a happy state yourself. You look at people and you say, oh, that's a happy person. I've been depressed my whole life. That's not me, but that's not fucking true. Even for me to be okay to walk around in a day, there are so many things that I have to do in the morning to set me up. And that's not to set me up to be a bundle of joy. That's just to set me up to not want to like hit people when they say dumb shit that I don't agree with, you know? So take the responsibility on yourself by understanding that everyone who I've met and everyone of you, I guess, you're, more, you're inclined to be sad. You can't be happy every day. That is impossible. It was like bouts of you don't feel that great every day, all day. The energetic ah, person who you just think, fuck, they're so happy all the time. That's just what they're showing you. Don't You're not with them like for 24 hours, seven days a week, are you? No. So everyone is inclined to depression. It's very important to understand that with this world of Instagram bullshit where people just post the happiness. I guess I obviously I'm not really going to, here's me crying, you know, <laughs> but that's why we need more real people. But understand if you feel depressed and sad, which I will do another podcast on, that people are inclined to depression. Your body's job is not to keep you happy. So you do not just get the right to be happy every day. That's an inside job. That's a self job. And that is continuous every fucking day of your life. Just like having a shower. It's cliche, but it is the truth. Everyone is inclined to depression. Next point. No one cares what you're doing and that's good like and bad but mostly good. Like no one cares about 
what you're doing. So don't put so much weight on you doing certain things or wanting to do certain things, you know. Like you can do this, 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 then I'm going to try this. And oh my God, who's going to think this? No one cares. No one cares in a good way. If it's successful, people are selfish. No one really cares. Everyone just wants to know how you can help them. They feel happy for you. And I'm not saying everyone's shit, but like no one really cares. And take that as a really light-hearted, positive thing to just do what you want when you want. And the people who want to jump on board will jump on board. And the people who don't, won't. Easy. Take all the weight and heaviness out of making a decision to understand that no one cares. Everyone is just in their little human body fucking navigating in their meat skeleton and they're just doing them and you're doing you. So don't think for a second that you're that on a pedestal that somebody out there is thinking about you before them every single second of their life. So use that to understand that just do. Just do what you want to do until you don't want to do it anymore. As long as you're not hurting anyone. I remember my friend Ash used to say that shit. Just do what you want as long as you're not hurting anybody. And that includes yourself, which is true. Next up is money is not everything. It's actually not anything, but every single person is worried about money. <laughs> yes, they are. So money isn't anything. And I think the official number is $70,000 a year from like millionaires and stuff is enough to keep everyone happy. If you have 70K, anything over that's just a bonus bonus, but that's the core needs met and never having to really worry about who's picking up the bill, that 70K figure, allegedly. So money isn't everything. And that story about that rich guy, obviously, there I've met a lot of other rich people who are miserable. Met a lot of rich people who are happy, but miserable. But money is not everything. Okay. I met a boy who was my age at the time, who was 23. And he was a investor for companies. Like he would just see startups and put money into them. This is actually a cool story. Let me divert for 30 seconds. That's all it's going to take. So I was like, I want to know what pe- people who like put money into startups. I was like, maybe I could use that. Maybe I can get people to try and invest in my business. And so I went to this business place in Bali and I tried to meet somebody, people who do that, ended up not being for me and I didn't enjoy the experience and I was bored. So I booked a random hostel in Seminyak because I was like, hostels, I'll be able to meet people and I'll just get my own room. So I was in my room and on my laptop and I had the windows open and this person had walked past me. And then when I walked out, we were having breakfast and he was like, what were you doing your laptop? And I kind of gave him some bullshit answer. And then he got talking and then anyway, we ended up like going to the beach and then getting some food and go for a walk and shit. This is not going to turn into a love story, guys. I was not attracted to him. Please, this ain't where that going. <laughs> and now we're married. No, we're not. So then we went and got food and I was just like more so like, what do you do? And then he went into detail and he was the fucking type of investor people that I was looking for at that business school. Just randomly at my hostel and I was like, what the fuck are you doing here? He's like, I'm looking for blocks of land because I want to build a surf school here in Bali and I stay at hostels because I know there's always just going to be interesting people. And I was like, that's what I do as well. And then we started talking about like funding companies and stuff and then he was like, you probably don't want somebody to fund your company if you don't have to because you'd rather just bootstrap it and build it from the ground up. And you don't want anyone to control it. And I was like, yeah, that's kind of that's kind of where I'm going. Yay. And then he in front of me fucking did a six hundred thousand dollar investment into a foreign exchange. And he was like, Oh, sorry, I just have to call my mum because like his bank had alerted that figure or something and he had to get his mum to do it from America because it was a high random amount for that time in the morning in America. I'm just like, bro, are you really? And what was I? I think I was 23 or 24 and he was my age. I'm like, brother, you really are just doing a $600,000 deal right in front of me. <laughs> and the purpose of that story, number one, he didn't have social media at all. The living legend, not even sharing his tricks and tips. But the point of that story is that his, the conversations I had with him were the exact same. Like he was doing all this and having all this money and that thing was out of his head. But he was like, like, I know what makes me happy and that's why I'm doing the surf school and I enjoy surfing and so that's why I came here because I just know that I can surf. But like, I don't really know. 
I'm just like, well, money isn't anything. Although everyone stresses about money. And even people, when they get more money, stress about the more money. So as you've heard from all the podcasts, take care of your finances. Please do. That is the bit of advice I would give to my younger self. Stop being so fucking YOLO careless. You need some money at some time. Just chill, budget, but understand that money is not the end goal and money doesn't mean anything if you don't feel your heart or if your lifestyle doesn't allow you to be a good person person and if it's not your job that you get fulfillment from if you can't get fulfillment from other things around you don't think that a money figure is going to be the answer to that because it's not okay what was the quote everyone knows that, oh I'm gonna butcher this but everyone knows that money doesn't make you happy but everyone wants to find out for themselves <laughs> that's so true that is the end of that topic Next up from my people on the road is the same as I've said two times before. Don't take advice from anyone unless you want to be in their position. So I won't go into that because I have drilled that in podcast number three. So number seven is that everyone compares themselves to people no matter what. No matter what. People with millions of followers. I remember listening to a podcast and some girl her dream was to be a singer and she had like 3 million followers and she got on stage. I don't know. It was someone, she was with someone like Taylor Swift or something. And she reckons the whole time she was touring with them, she felt so inadequate because they had more followers than her on Instagram. They were like, Oh my God, I don't have fucking 23 million. It's just like, Oh my God, where does this stop? It doesn't stop anywhere. So everyone compares themselves to everyone so you just got to do you and as dumb as that sounds and although that just seems like a complete and utter cop out it is true because it doesn't stop there is no end like numbers are infinite next topic is that people is all there is people and experiences with these people and you and yourself becoming what you think you should become or an ideal of a human which with such integrity and morals to do your life the way you see fit that's all there is humans and that family and people good people are everything and family doesn't have to be blood family and moments and humans and doing and experiencing is all there is a quote that I posted the other day from Man Search for Himself by Rollo May says, life is occupied in both perpetuating itself and in surpassing itself. If all it does is maintain itself, then living is only not dying and human experience is indistinguishable from a vegetation. Uh-huh. Very, very, very true. Switch the book to Conversations with God. Yet you are always limited by your knowingness for you. We are all self-created being. You cannot be what you do not know yourself to be. That is why you have been given this life so that you might know yourself in your own experience. Then you can conceive of yourself as who you really are and create yourself as that in your experience. And the circle is again complete, only bigger. And so you are in the process of growing or as I have put it in this book of becoming. And there is no limit to what you can become. That's all life is, my friends, is becoming and being and doing and moments and people and good people and feeding your soul on this just journey. That's all it is. It's not just one destination because once you get there, it's something else. Yeah? And people help you experience this. And you help yourself experience everything because you create it as you do. Last quote. The soul conceives, the mind creates, the body experiences. The circle is complete. The soul then knows itself in its own experience. It does, if it does not like what is it experiencing or feeling or wishes a different experience for any reason, it simply conceives of a new experience of self and quite literally changes its mind. Soon the body will find itself in a new experience. Conceive, create, experience. What you conceive, you create. What you create, you experience. What you experience, you conceive. Yes? If you don't like something, these little moments, you quite literally can just fucking 
change. <laughs> I was going to say just get on a plane and start somewhere else, but you can't do that right now because of COVID-19. But you get what I mean. Everything in your head is eventually something physically out in front of you and then you get to experience that thing, right? Awake to us was once an idea in my head. How the fuck now is it a living being which is affecting other people's lives? Yeah, you can do that in every single aspect of your life as well. All these little moments. And then it's also taking responsibility if you're in a shit situation, and I say this on no pedestal because I'm the worst at this, is just by changing it, like bad relationship and stuff like that. Oh, I'm this, 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 and they're doing this to me. And, oh, you don't understand because of this, but you're choosing that. And although it's easier said than done, and I know there's extreme cases, please don't get angry at me. But they're like, why are you the type of person to allow this to happen to you? Stop, pivot, move, change your course of direction, fuck that off. I know you've had time together. I know this, this, and this has happened. But if you're not happy, fucking pivot. We're going to change what's in your head to change what's out there to change what you then get to walk through and talk through and experience from your life. Okay? I think that got a bit deep. <laughs> All righty. Number eight. Brutal one is don't lie, okay? Don't lie. This is a common thing on the road. Don't lie. Don't think that you're better than anyone. You're all going to die. You're going to die. I hate meeting people who think that they're better than people because they're fucking Instagram famous or they've done this or this, 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 or this. Be appreciative for the people who have got you to the place where you are today, but you're not better than anyone, so shut the fuck up and be nice to everyone because why would you not be? Because you're going to to die and you're not better than anyone, okay? Okay? So, yeah, just don't lie. And, again, not from a place of pedestal. When I was younger I lied and I ended up hurt, hurting someone and I promised myself that I would never lie ever again and I've kind of lived my life like this and it's been life-changing because it's like everyone now has all the information and they can decide whether they like me or not and they, if they're like, oh, my God, but you did this, I'm like, yeah, I know, and I told you that I did, so now it's on you to figure out if I'm someone that you want to be friends with. Like, don't come around here acting like you didn't know everything. You have all the information. So just don't lie in any situation. And there's so many little stories that I could tell from the road or people doing this or this or this or this. Ah. I'm not going to go into it, but don't lie because you will always get caught out some way, somehow. And if you don't, which you will, trust me, if you don't, you will feel so shit anyway. And I know this again because I've done it before and I've also had it done onto me. <laughs> I remember somebody lied about something to me and literally like two years later I was at a party and some random person was talking about a situation and that situation was the thing that they'd lied to me about and it was the true situation. I was like, oh, is that right? Say it a little bit louder so I could fucking record that. Liars. But, yeah, don't lie. It makes you feel shit unless there's some twisted psychopath, narcissistic fucking person who believes their own lies and is twisted you will feel worse if you lie so just don't lie I also meet a lot of people oh there's two parts to this but I meet a lot of people who are just straight up flexing like they think they should be a certain type of way so they buy the stuff and they look the stuff and they do the things and they're talking shit <laughs> like they're lying that does something to you it makes you feel like a phony because you know in yourself that that's not the truth so you don't feel good about it you don't so yeah just don't lie it's a lot easier if I can give anyone advice and that's what I'll drill into my kids just don't lie just fess up like go eight mile on your life and just someone said you do this you said yes I did and I did this 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 and this too now you can't shit on me and you have all the information to make the decision about what you think about me and it's not some bullshit story and I'm not sugarcoating stuff and yeah okay cool <laughs> so the second part to that is don't screw people over obviously we all learn and we all have our experiences and we're like oh my god I can't believe I was the type of person to have have done that to somebody before but if you can avoid it just don't screw people over and when it comes to people screwing you over, bless their soul, but just take away from it. I don't know the quote off by heart, but it's like just because you've lost me as a friend doesn't mean I've gained you as an enemy. 
you just don't eat with us anymore <laughs> or you don't eat at this table, yeah? Like I've cut off one human in my life but in saying that it's not like I need revenge and everyone needs to know and I need to make up this blog post about what they did. Like it's not that. It's just I'm sorry, bro. I no longer have interest in what you're doing. I no longer am going to listen to you when you need help and that's just that. I'm sorry. But it doesn't mean that you've gained an enemy. I have no hatred towards you because that hatred will just make me more unhappy. Obviously, that comes with time. Go through the motions of your emotion. <laughs> but yeah, try to avoid screwing people over. And if you do, just fess up. Just put your hands up and be like, yo, I did it and I'm sorry. And explain. Explain everything. And not even for this fucking someone over situation, but if you're in an awkward situation and you're like, oh, my God, they're going to think this, 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 and this, just put your hand up and be like, oh, this looks awkward, but it's because this is happening and this happened, so this is why this is happening. And they're like, oh, like explain yourself. <laughs> Just talk to people about everything and don't lie and try to limit making other people's lives worse. I always say that. I'm like, when you meet someone, your goal is to make their life better. And if you can't, at the very least, don't make it worse. Yeah, like you meet people and they're just having a shit day every single day of their life and they put that on you and it's like everyone's life is hard enough as it is. Don't make people's life worse. Obviously special and people need help at some times but the general consensus, don't. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so that leads into to always be a good person. It's easier that way. It really, really is. It feels better as well. Next is that you will outgrow friends and don't feel bad about it. You will go through different identities and who you think you are and what you feel is important, yeah, and that is okay. A lot of people are friends with people just because of location or because they went to school together and then they find it hard to talk to them and they find it hard to relate to them and they're like, wow, I've so outgrown this person, but they force the relationship because they think that they should but if you're just not going in the same direction, have a chat about it. <laughs> a lot of people are like, oh, I hate this person now. It's like, well, you're not doing them a service by just pretending to be their mate. So stop it. Stop it. You know, you can grow. You're allowed to. <laughs> um, one of my last topics is that everyone feels less than. Everyone thinks that they're not worthy. Everyone thinks that everything is done by those people or people out there. You know when you're talking, you're like, oh, you know that they say when you do this and you're like, who is they? Who is they? I have no idea who they is, but everyone thinks that they have the answers and they are the bigger people in our world. But to other people, you are they. So everyone feels less than that I have met and everyone feels not worthy and nobody starts a business or talking because they feel like they don't deserve to because who the fuck are they, right? They know their life story. Like I know my life story. I know the things that I've been through and I know who I was. So it's kind of like, who do I think I am? Who gives me the right to pretend I know what I'm talking about? Because you call your own bullshit. So everyone feels less than and that is normal. So just lean into that and again, as we said, be self-aware and understand if you have got gifts to share or if you want to start being a certain type of person, if you feel like you deserve it, then you will get confidence from repetition and confidence from knowing that you actually know what you're talking about. But that feeling less than and not feeling good enough is something that every single person goes through. It's like imposter syndrome. Yeah, like somebody can see you and think that you're the greatest thing on earth and to them you're like... I was going to say Britney Spears, but she's gone a bit downhill right now. I've seen some of her videos. Britney Spears in her prime. No, she, she was good. She needs some help sometimes. Um, but Britney Spears in her prime or like Will Smith, he's a G. They think that you're like the Will Smith of the world to them, but you know that like you, you shit and you have down days and you, you know, like you know yourself at your core. So you're like, as if, that's not me, bro. But everyone feels like that. Everyone has that imposter syndrome-ness to them. So you just have to do. And that's another thing. Everyone feels too old or too young or not good enough. So I met this lady in this random island of Croatia who had a child really, really young and she was so full of life and just quit everything to go volunteer to help plant gardens for an eco hostel. 
and she just felt too old and not good enough to be there, but she just felt like she needed to do that for her. She felt too old and then we would feel too young and now that I'm a bit older, I feel too old. And everything is waiting for the time when you don't feel that way, but you always feel that way. So just do. Another passage from a book. This one is Roldo May, Man Search for Himself. It says, the statement of the person of 20 who says, I will begin to live when I am 35, is as falsely based as the one who, at 40 or 50, says, I cannot live because I have lost my youth. Interestingly enough, one generally finds on closer inspection that this is the same person that the one who makes that layman at 50 was postponing living also at 20, which demonstrates our point even more precisely. Very, 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 very true. Everyone's living a life where they think someone else is it. They think them in the future is it. Then when they get there, it's not it. And they call their own bullshit because they know themselves. And you just have to push past that. You have to understand that you are worthy and you are awesome and you just do. But every single person has that thing in their head. But every single person is you, so just do. (laughs) And lastly is that you're all the exact same You're all the exact same. You are all fun. You are all good people. You have to understand no one is shit. There are very select few people in the world who are actually shit. It's same with like, this is a very extreme example. Don't think I'm crazy. But a suicide bomber, like in their head, a suicide bomber is doing that for the right reason. It is the thing that they should do to help their community and be taken to a higher level fucking purpose right so they don't wake up and just think i'm going to hurt people because i'm bad they feel like it's something inside them and it's for a bigger reason that is extreme example but no one generally is just waking up and being like i want to cause people pain and if people inflict pain or they're twisted and sick and narcissistic and cruel that comes from a behavior trait in themselves of like they, they don't feel good enough and they're getting validation through hurting people and getting a response. But again, that's another podcast. Yeah, I just want everyone to understand that everyone in the world is going through the exact same things and no matter what age you are, like if you have people dying around, you have bad relationships, you feel blockages in yourself, you feel not good enough, you feel not worthy, like you're not alone and every single person in every single square inch of the globe... <laughs> is doing the exact same thing and that like spins me out every time I talk to people like I met these girls from Israel and I met a girl whose family is part of this thing which gets their community gifted to them each of the children raise each other at the same age so if it was me my brother and sister my brother and sister would go to a separate house and I would go into the house with the people my age and we would raise each other I was like, how on earth would that work? If me and my friends were raising each other, I don't know what we would get done. And that would be interesting. That would be a TV show. Um, I don't want to say the name of it or too much about it just because I don't know how to pronounce the name and I don't want to butcher the story. But I met her and she was going through the exact same things. Like she's like, oh, I love art and travel and I want to go to India, but then I also want to go to America and I want to work in a summer camp. And then another girl we were from was from the same type of place, but not from one of those housing communities. And she was saying the same things to me and so confused about her life and what she was doing and her family. And that also spun me out because I I had never met anyone from that country as well. And I had a predetermined idea of what they'd be like, but they were exactly like me. And there was a healer lady in Thailand and she was, I was like eating in front of her and trying to be polite and covering my mouth. And she's like, Oh darling, I'm an Israeli woman. I don't, I don't care. Fucking eat what you want in front of me. Like they'd swear and just be so intense. And they were exactly like us. And they were like, we've always been told that we're as brutal as the Australian girls. And if we wanted to move somewhere, we'd fit in well there. I'm like, I never expected you guys to be like this and that's just my own complete and utter ignorance to the whole to the world you know what I mean so if you take anything from this podcast and the whole purpose is just for you to understand that everyone in the world is going through the exact same things and everyone that I meet just has that yearning inside them and the confusion and just oh my god what am I doing and they're all a little bit depressed and sad and look at other people as if They're the ones with all the answers and they just think that everyone's bigger and better than them and they can't take control of their life because they'll never be like those people. 
and you are those people. You just have to stop and breathe and just know that you're in control of your life and no one is better than you and it's just your journey of moments and you do till you do till you don't want to do it, then you change and you experience with people and maybe stay off social media a bit if you find yourself in that trap of everyone's bigger and better. Just do a detox because that shit is bad for your soul sometimes. Ah. All right, so I'm sorry if this was just all over the place. I honestly just woke up and was like, I'm going to talk about that before I lose those ideas in my head. And I did that and I'm sure there are topics that I have missed out, but that's all I can run with and I'm sorry if it's a bit all over the place because I normally have more of a structure and I just was freestyle chatting. You are never too old, you're never too young, you are never not good enough, you always are be self-aware look into yourself understand what it is you need to do to become the person that you want to be but also understand that you are that person now and act like that now and you are good enough now regardless of anything and if you think that you're alone you are not because everyone's the exact same they just don't talk about it <laughs> they just don't talk about it and I am the exact same as that and I have done and been a victim of and put on to others too of everything in that list that I have just said and I will again in my life. Just is, you know, you learn, yeah? All right, so I hope you guys enjoyed this. Oh, I do want to ask, if you guys listen on the podcast app, can you please rate it because, and I'll say this because I never would ask for anything like this, there is some person, two people, who before they even listened to the first podcast gave it a one star and a two star and they did that because they didn't even listen to the full duration because it wasn't enough time and now it's taken my full five stars down to 4.5 and fuck them because someone used to do that on Awake to us too. There were these two boys because it was all five stars and they put a one star and I'd have to write like, oh, that's a shame you've never done a tour because they hadn't but they just wanted their name to be there. And I was like, You're so rude and they eventually took it away. Yay. So if you do listen, I would never normally ask, but could you please rate it? And you can be honest. If you think it's shit, you can give it a one star too, but I appreciate it if you didn't because I don't think it's that shit. <laughs> but yeah, because then it will help me get into the new of new podcasts, which they will evaluate in a couple months time, which means more people can listen to me and my manly voice, you know? And that's super important. <laughs> it's not. It's not. But anyway, all right. I hope y'all have a good day. I love you a lot. I will be back next week with some other hard-hitting fucking information. Yeah, I love ya. Hopefully you guys are all doing well during this crazy COVID-19 bullshit that is a random year of 2020. It's already May. It's already halfway through the year. That is hectic. I love you. Have a good day. No one else tells you that I love you. I love you. Mwah. See you soon. Bye.